Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood. I am here uh, talking to Kai Christian Mueller, who is all the way over in Germany. Guten Abend. How are you? <laughs> uh, very well. Guten Abend uh, to the U.S. Good evening to the U.S. or good day. It's, uh, it's 1, 1 p.m. at, yes. at, your, at L.A. Yep. And, and so, yeah. The East Coast. Time, time zones some, some, sometimes a bit, right. let's say, a problem. <laughs> it's, a, it's an issue, and it's, a, it's always a scheduling thing because we're, I believe, nine or ten hours apart. Nine hours. It's nine hours. It's nine hours. So I appreciate you taking the time, and one of the things you wanted to discuss is we're going into the mm -hmm. 2020 election. There's a lot of talk yeah. of what is, is, and it's the same conversation that was had back in 16, but now right. and this is a lot of people are like, well, if, if Bernie and, and I talked about this with Elizabeth Lee Voss in an, in an interview, too, mm. um, if Bernie gets cheated again by the Democrats, should we all back whoever because Trump is so bad, he's so bad? Or should we um, say no? Another centrist Democrat is going to allow Trump to win and we need real progressives. And if and and if. Bernie gets cheated again, then we have to, you know, whatever, start a third party or, or whatever. So you, you, you have some definite thoughts on that. What are they? And not definite thoughts, but I just, uh, I just want to say something about what I've uh, uh, figured out for myself. Okay. Uh, because it's it's a, it's a, it's a it's a hard one. It's definitely in a hard one, and there is. In the in the end, no, uh, I I won't give any advice. I just wanna let's say uh, present what I what my understanding of the whole system is and what uh, ramifications are there uh, with the one or the other way, because I I I have learned that. There is only one person who nominates federal judges at any level, and that's the president of the United States. Is 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 that correct? Yes, but the um, you know that has to go through an approval process, and um, so <laughs> the the Democrats yeah, have just been may, 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 may jump in because uh, I think we could agree that this approval process might be work if the Democrats had a 60 or more vote majority in the Senate, because as I'm, I write, uh, the Senate is the chamber who confirms the judges. Is that yes, correct? That's correct. Okay. So we have a majority in the Senate from Republicans and we have a Republican president who is out of the bazoo bonkers. Yeah. Let's say that way. And I, followed the nomination processes of uh, Neil Gorsuch and Brady Boy Kavanaugh. And with both, these are only the most prominent examples on how not to choose, who and how not to choose a judge. Mm -hmm. I think we could agree on that. Mm -hmm. And I have learned that Donald Trump is ramping up the federal judiciary with cronies like this. Oh, yeah, and that's, and even on, on the state uh, judge appointees, but the Democrats have been rubber stamping his ju his judge appointments, even on the lower in the lower courts. And here, here is here is the problem, because I compared it to the German system. In Germany, we have a complete different system. The only judges, just as I know, I will dive in a bit, a bit deeper and present it in, at another day. But... Let's, the highest court in Germany is uh, the Bundesverfassungsgericht, the federal court of the Constitution. And first, of, first and foremost, we have one terms, one term uh, judges for 12 years. So there's a constant change in the, uh, in the bench, constant change in the bench. And the, the other thing is uh, two things. First of all, it's not only one person who nominates, but it's the faction of the party in the parliament. And the judge has to has to be confirmed by a 
two of two out of three majority from the whole parliament. Mm -hmm. So this prevents the nomination of too much biased candidates in the one or the other side. Mm -hmm. And in the US, it's completely different because I learned that even the 60 vote majority could be uh, canceled through that what they call nuclear option. Mm -hmm. And that's and that concerns me a lot because you are now in the battle uh, for Roe versus Wade. Uh, you, well, there's, there's several things. I'll say this. Like, if they try to overturn yeah. Roe versus Wade, this country will go bananas. They never, it's a, it's a threat that they hang over uh, the, oh, we're going to try to get Roe v. Wade and I try to get Roe v. Wade and it is used as a distraction to get everybody on the left all mobilize Roe v. Wade while they go bomb and give the banks money and do everything else. So okay. I don't like Trump and I don't like his judiciary appointments. Obama could have appointed people and he didn't. So this notion, I just flat out don't agree that that's a reason to vote for any Democrat will do because they screwed, they cheated a, a progressive in 2016. Mm -hmm. The Podesta emails and are the Podesta emails. And uh, I, I, I must correct myself. I didn't want uh, to give any advice. I just want to, let's say, build bridges between the one camp and the other that, to, to point out that both camps had valid points for their arguments. Mm -hmm. And that uh, antagonizing each other in, in, in the view of the 2020 election might be counterproductive. That the uh, uh, Bernie or Bust camp and the, let's say, tactical camp should come together again and uh, work out a way to get a progressive uh, candidate into the office. That was my point. I maybe had mis un misrepresented it in the, for, uh, in the fall uh, uh, before. That was, or that is what I wanted to say. I hope that makes some sense for you. Sure. <laughs> because I followed a different, I, I told you, from David Pakman, oh, uh, David Pakman, Sam Seed, uh, uh, Jamal Thomas, Nico House, you, TYT, Jimmy Dore, and a couple of us, Kim Iverson, of course. And I think all you all could work together, but in the in the comment comment section, sometimes is so much vitriol against the one or the other side, and I think that's uh, quite a danger because if th these antagonistic vibes grow, that might be dangerous for the twenty twenty elections. It also that might is be deliberately you know, put the CIA or wherever might be deliberately having people go into the comment section to start fights, to divide the left. Maybe. I wouldn't go so far because uh, how much influence does these troll farms really have? We don't know it, and I have to correct my camera because that's what's it. That uh, uh, again was also a finding with the Mueller report uh, that there was uh, intervention through bots, partly uh, run by Russia, mm -hmm. and uh, that's another thing. But that's also a, a, a thing I, w I will come uh, in a later discussion back on it, because I believe that sometimes on the in part of the progressive movement, they underestimate Russia, the danger of Russia. But, yeah. I mean, maybe. I mean, for me personally, I know Russia is, I know Putin is not some good guy. I know they're not like uh, just some innocent little country. I know they're not that at all. But the fact that we do all of these corrupt things and we blame them on everything and also that, look, the peak of defense spending was 1980, global defense spending was 1980, and that was the peak of the Cold War. So the yeah. defense contractors want to get us back into that, because if we're like Russia, 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 that means all of our allies, NATO, everybody else has to buy all of our uh, weapons. You, 
you you will uh, you will know you will not hear at all any counter argument but in europe it's a bit different because it's closer and uh, that that not so nice guy in the kremlin is meddling all over europe sure the, the right wing uprising in in europe especially in germany and italy is supported by that kremlin guy mm -hmm. quite heavily and quite in secret and we must not forget putin has a different approach putin wants the, wants the soviet union back that's his goal yeah he's ex-kgb ex we can't forget that he's yeah. ex-kgb and yes yeah. and, and, and next things putin is uh 20, times smarter than trump ever, ever will be well, well is, you know, my cat, if I had one, would be smarter than Trump. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, but that's 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 my uh, that's my uh, let's say that's my opinion. I get in it, and I think the strategy of Putin is something like just keep the rest of the world in turmoil, so he has his freedoms to do whatever he want in his so supposed to be backyard. And here I could make a connection to the Ukraine because in a lot of the left wing people in the US see in a way see the Ukraine as, as the instigator of the turmoils. We must not forget that Putin annexed the, the, the Crimea Peninsula. And that is by international law as lawful as the settlements in, let's say, the Palestine uh, territories from Israel. Uh, the, the Israeli settlements in the Palestine territories, are, um, they have the same legality. And the referendum the Russians con, uh, instigated, it was a fraud. Let's be clear about that. And... A lot of people think the that these one or two battalions which uh, flying. Ah, uh, okay. Sorry. Okay. Do it different. The uh, the the these neo-Nazi battalions are so bad, but we must keep one thing in mind. Back in the days. The Germans were in the Ukraine were partly seen as liberators from the other dictatorships. So they went from the pan and the, to the fire, let's say. That way. But for a lot of people, for a short period of time, it was like they gained back freedom and respect, which the Soviet Union didn't give to a lot of Ukrainians. So they have a slightly different understanding of the symbols. Right. This is part of it. They, they are also diehard neo-Nazis I despise, obviously. But it's, it's a bit more nuanced than it is presented in the US in progressive media sometimes. Mm -hmm. that, that's... As we talked before, that's a lot of things I find, and I just want to uh, give to you to do whatever you want with it. But uh, yeah, it's like they're valid points, and it is something to remind people, uh, myself included, in in the independent progressive media. Like, let's let's look at what Putin has and is doing, and and be aware of that. I think more most of us are coming from in the progressive media is that sort of like understood that we know Putin is not great. I just have a, such a problem with it used as this scapegoat for everything and uh, no no analysis Absolutely. of the DNC fr fraud in the no, no 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 definitely not and definitely so, not. I, I'm you, you don't live you don't live in America so I'm living here again no. and I'm seeing what I yes. saw in the 80s all the movies, all the TV shows, the jokes on late night TV are all about Russia, 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 Russia as this big scary bad guy again. 
And when I see Rachel Maddow do one of her crazy Russia segments that's sponsored by Boeing, I know the real reason behind this. That doesn't mean that I think Putin is some puppy dog guy that we're all going to fall in love with. No, and it's no, 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 bring no. Up what he's actually doing, but that's where I'm coming from. Is like I've, I lived through this. Uh, uh, to, uh, awful. Graham, Graham, uh, we we had all these shitty movies in Germany yeah. as well. <laughs> and back. at I mean, times we will. Icarus uh, won the Oscar for best doc like a year or so ago. I mean, mm. there's a there's a special on Chernobyl, and I see that on the buses driving around uh, a documentary mm. about Chernobyl, which was awful, and I'm sure the Russian government covered it up. But HBO was not doing a documentary about the Flint water crisis and the and the cover up of that, or Dakota Act, or the or Standing Rock, or any of the cover ups that this government has done. It's very that's it's very uh, that's that's George Sheridan's job, and he does an amazing one on yeah. this. And he's never allowed. <laughs> On mainstream media. Oh, I, I, I must not forget. I also follow John Sheridan as well. He's great. So, and that's that's the point I want to make, which is of most importance. Don't rely on one source. And I want to come back to, to Russia. RT, RT is by no stretch of any imagination a reliable source because in Germany. Russia, uh, Russia Today, Germany, is a bit more like Breitbart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and sure. that's, look, look, Russia TV is state TV. There's no, there's no two ways about it. It is state TV, but it is at least presenting a side that we don't get in America, at least. It's like Al Jazeera is, is uh, press TV. Is, these are all state-run um, channels that, but at least they're giving us a side that we're not seeing from the corporate media here is, is not giving us yeah. all of the side. So and, you uh, have to kind of watch a little bit of all of them and then all of these look, independent media sources to get any sort of idea of what even, potentially the truth is. I even followed a, a, at times Alex Jones just to know what does he spew out. So I knew it, let's say, more or less firsthand. I'm a great uh, admirer from uh, as close as firsthand sources as possible. Um, and quality media is so important for a democracy that I'm absolutely shocked when I learned what uh, what the media circus is in the US. And I ne Look, in the back in the eighties or in the early nineties, CNN was considered gold standard. Yeah. They were good at times. Mm -hmm. MSNBC was considered gold standard. CNN broke the story. CNN that. CNN that. Washington Post, the the, the cornerstone of independent journalism. They broke a Watergate. Mm -hmm. And today, what? Yeah, and I, I I found out that in that our tight teeny tiny Germany has a much better press, even the private ones. I don't talk about radio and uh, television, but we have some amazing print media in Germany. By the way, mentioned in that in that essay uh, we talked about, uh, and also these print media have their own boots on the ground all over the world. So they, and here's it, how these, uh, how I learned these uh, uh, agencies work, because there is so much different news on the world. No, no news outlet like a newspaper or so could take it all. And in Germany, it's so they take, let's say, minor stories, like... It sounds nasty, but uh, major accidents uh, uh, are, are following in this category by there is not so much investigation needed in the first place. An accident happens. It's international news. They take it from the news agencies like Reuters or AFN or the German equivalent. Mm. But if there is something they have to investigate, they will send the boots on the ground right. out to investigate. And that's why I, I, I heard you and I say, read that uh, essay and said, okay, maybe it, 
it fits 100% into the earth, but in the German media, not so much. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned it before. May I mention it right now? Sure. In, I found a extremely annoying, easy to uh, easy to, to research error in this essay because they called is a German public television state run. Okay. Government that was in the implicit Zero article that I was referencing when I did that article or that video Good. about right. the yeah. CIA controlling the media. Mm -hmm. And German public television is by no means run by the government. There is a, a, a let's say, oversight body which contains uh, which contains members from all of German states mm -hmm. and there are other bodies where it is at, let's say a, a mild oversight but the 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 real let's say board of directors kind of premium isn't that political uh, especially for the ARD which is the first German television program or the first German television company which is a public entity without governmental control. That's absolute important because Germany learned as many things the hard way during the Second World War. We had, must not have government-run television as the main source. We have a government-run uh, uh, television. It's called Deutsche Welle. But even on this outlet, you find articles and segments it's a television and radio program which is cr highly critical of the, the german government i will send you a link you could add it as a additional source they have english speaking uh, features okay they well, will show that clarification i appreciate that one of the yeah. things um mm. like i say on this show uh you know unlike the corporate media uh if i get it wrong i'll, I'll own like. it um Mm -hmm. And I want to get it right. That's all I want to do. And also, um, you know, it's just me. So I don't have a research team. So when I get an article sent to me by a Patreon supporter, I, you know, I don't, hey, you know. Tim, you have a research team. You have your followers. You have your Patreons. Sure. And I do my research. And I I will send you in. Uh, in uh, Patreon uh, sent me that article. So I was kind of. Yes, of course. And a lot of this article is correct but there are some things i must clear and that's german right. public television is not run by the government okay. that's of utmost important but there is because some television run by the german government or none there is one channel it's called deutsche welle it's let's say uh, kind of an ambassadorship of german news okay but it's 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 a reasonable channel. They work very closely with the with the other television stations, and some every once in a while, I, I don't think they make a lot of reports by themselves. But they took a lot of the public German television uh, features and bring it trans uh, make a English synchronization and send it out. And you may believe it or not, but even there they do very high quality journalism internationally they break german news they break international news and another good source is your news euro news okay well that's good and now. yeah and i i follow the news political news for the better part of 35 years i'm i'm 42 right now i start at the age of eight years I think I developed a pretty decent bullshit de detector over the years. Right. And here's how I go. I hear segments, let's say from Karl Kolinsky or you or them, and then I do a bit of my own research. And if I find out the segment is correct, I do it again and again. And at times when I see, okay, I'm right, I say, okay. It's a credible source. I trust you. I did it with uh, TYT and uh, don't far. I didn't found too much wrong. And if they bungled it, they clear clarified it very fast over and over again. 
Well, that's good to know. Thank you for clearing that up. And um, mm -hmm. so as we uh, as we wrap up here, I appreciate you bringing up uh, multiple sides to not only the Putin Russia Gate thing, but yeah. also just a way to potentially view um, this 2020 election. I don't. I personally don't agree with that. I. I. I I'm. I'm not going to vote for uh, the Bernie. I'm not going to. Me that's all we have. But uh, look, it. It would be utterly boring if we agree on every, everything. Uh, yeah, it would. And I appreciate your stand and you enlightened me a bit because you. You you say it that if they try to kill Roe with his weight. Uh, the the republicans the republicans just press the self destruct button without any countdown. Yeah, something along this line. It I would be the hope end of the Republican they... Party if they did that. I mean, it would literally. That's their mm -hmm. one. It is the pin in the grenade, and they always threaten to pull it, but they never will. And if they actually try, people would go. It would be then there would be complete. There wouldn't be women's marches on Saturdays. Women would just, I mean, there's, there are some conservative women that are, that are against abortion, but the majority of, Look, and, and, and you would mobilize a bunch of women who maybe aren't that politically active. Look, but there is, there is another story I want to share with you. I have, I have tons of story. We could, well, we got to. <laughs> We can't. We could talk about it, but it's, it's a brief one. Okay. Uh, a couple of years ago in Ireland, uh, they hold a public referendum on the issue of abortion. And how? why did they this? On the one hand, the EU said, okay, you must have some, uh, some way to an abortion because they consider it as a right. And there was an incident. Uh, that supported the uh, pro-abortion side. There was a woman who got a st uh, where the fetus, let's say, died in the uterus, mm -hmm. and they had not the right to pull the the tissue out. Let's let's say it briefly, if the fetus is died, no no brain activity, no heartbeat, no nothing. It's 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 that it's that tissue. What does that? What does do that tissue? It decomposes in the body. And I think we could, uh, without being a, a gynecologist, I hope I pronounce it right. Gynecology. We could figure out that that might not be the best thing for the living part of the body for the mother. Mm -hmm. I think we could agree on that. Yes, it was. The, uh, the that woman died in utterly pain due to a hefty infection. Mm -hmm. This was the the uh, the case which, in the end, a lot of people said switch the vote. I hope I I remember right. I will scrutinize it and give you a short notice if I was wrong or right. And why why on earth? Are these freaking religious sellers so powerful in the U.S.? That's that's a, a thing we sh we might discuss on another day because that I can't understand. Yeah, the evangelicals are very it's, powerful. They got radicalized in the late '70s when Carter was in office. The Republican Party then went more yeah, right. Yeah. And of course, the Democrats Southern strategy, which doesn't them. exist according to what is her name? Cadence, Candace, whatsoever owns. <laughs> Nut jobs. Yeah. Sorry. Well, Kai, thank you so much, man, for your time. And I know it's uh, oh. getting, excuse me, getting late there oh. in Germany. We appreciate you being on the show. Uh, I, I will I, I, I will be awake until I, I watch the. Power pen on on Friday. It's a fixed uh, it's a fixed term for me. <laughs> oh, great. Well, uh, and to everybody else watching, uh, uh, you can support the show too by going to patreoncom slash Elwood. You can do uh, video interviews like we just did from wherever you are in the world. As long as you have an internet connection and a camera, we can talk about whatever it is you'd like to talk about. And I love having uh, discussions and debates like this. It's what the show's all about, and it's. 
viewer supported. I don't get money from Boeing or Merck Pharmaceuticals or Exxon Mobil or uh, any of those other lunatics. So mm -hmm. I just get it from uh, lunatic progressives such as yourself. So uh, it's it's great having this show. And I Being named a lunatic lunatic from me for me is a compliment. <laughs> Well, yeah, I think it is. Hey, well as well. come on! I'm 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 just a random weirdo German. So <laughs> yes, I'm uh, of a lunatic. I admit it. Well, the lunatic. And I love to talk it, about politics. I love it. Yeah, it's great talking about it. So thank you for being on the show, and everybody else there. You can go to mm -hmm. GrahamElwood.com for tour dates, and like, subscribe, and share these videos. Uh, and uh, by doing that, you are all being political vigilantes and helping me get the truth mm -hmm. out. Thank you so much for watching.